Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Mexpat Dating. So we got a really interesting video today. We're going to be talking about is knowing Spanish necessary for dating? And to give you guys the quick answer, uh, it's yes and no. And so I'm joined with my Spanish teacher today, uh, Jimena. Thank you for uh, coming on today. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. So yeah, so I've been working with Jimena for about three, maybe four months now. And I think that kind of gets into the answer right there is that for the first eight months I was in Mexico, I didn't speak any Spanish. All I did was Google Translate. However, that had some drawbacks and that's kind of what we're going to be getting to in this podcast. So by the end of it, you should know, hey, should I be taking Spanish lessons or not? And I'll tell you, it's been a process. She's been grinding me a little bit on some of this uh, vocabulary. So uh, can you introduce yourself and tell us like, you know, what got you into Spanish lessons, et cetera? Okay, well, hi, my name is Jimena. I'm 22 years old, and right now I'm teaching in a platform called italki, and I have been teaching for about, I think, two or three years now, and I was interested in doing this because I love languages, so I really enjoy helping others to improve in their Spanish, so that's why I started doing this job. Cool, well, very, very altruistic there, so... Uh, many people appreciate you always got a book schedule. So I'm um, really excited to pick your brain because um, we've talked on our you know, Spanish lessons uh, about dating and stuff. So actually last session, we broke down a text exchange from one of the girls that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And it took like a whole hour to get through, like, I don't know, a few messages, but it was really helpful. And I think a lot of guys, they come down to Mexico and they're like, hey, I can't start dating until I know perfect Spanish. And we've seen this with clients that we've worked with before, like, you know, they take Spanish lessons almost every day. So they're very proficient at it. For them, they're like, you know, I'm still not good enough. I'm still not ready. Mm -hmm. And when I meet them and I start going out and I'm showing them like cold approach and stuff, uh, a lot of times I just end up whipping out my phone and doing Google Translate because I can only say a few things like, hola, you know, hablas ingles, um, mm -hmm. eres mexicana. And then like, que te gusta Mexico? That's about it. <laughs> and from there, it's like, um, there's problems arise unless they do speak English. So what they saw, they're like, holy crap, like, I actually don't need to know perfect Spanish. I can just speak. Basically, I can just say a few things. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your thoughts on that when it comes to dating and knowing or not knowing Spanish? Mm, I think it depends on the situation because you can know Spanish, but it doesn't mean that you have to be an expert. Uh, I know that a lot of Mexican like women, they know a little bit of English. So in that case, you don't have to be an expert. But I think it will be necessary for you to learn a little bit at least or to try a little bit because you will show like the interest that you have for the Mexican culture. And I think that women here will appreciate that and they will be like, oh, he's like interested in that. I think he's trying really hard to communicate because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like each language, like English and Spanish, we have different contexts and maybe we can have a miscommunication if we write something in my language and you don't understand and you write something in your language and i don't understand it's like well we don't have like a good communication so mm -hmm. i think it will be great if you try a little bit to learn spanish you don't have to be an expert but at least know the basics to so yes <laughs> give me the basics so now a point you just mentioned there is like i like when a guy tries and he puts an effort, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Now, you hear this a lot in the West, like, you know, guys shouldn't have to try. Like, if they try, they're being a loser. They're, you know, try hard or whatever. Now, you're in, in Mexico, right? So this is something that I think a lot of, one of the reasons why a lot of guys want to come down here is because there's more traditional feminine women than mm -hmm. versus in the States where it's a lot of masculine women, a lot of that whole, you know, woke coach culture. It's, um, it's a bit toxic. And so... Uh, a lot of guys find relief when they come down here because they can put in effort and they're not like judged for it. Oh my God, this guy's a loser. Like he has to try. Right. So what is your perspective on that? When a guy has to put in effort or does put in effort, like, is that a turn on to you turn off? Uh, for me, it's something that I like. Uh, I think also a lot of Mexican women here, they like that, that when a guy tries hard, I'm not saying like you are going to demonstrate something really hard or you're going to jump from a, like an uh, airplane for me, no. But it's nice when you try hard and you, like you put aside your ego, like, or your pride, mm -hmm. and you try hard for that person that you are interested in. So for me, it's a turn on. 
okay. instead of turn it off. So uh, I like that. So that's why you get so annoyed with me in Spanish lessons. Huh? <laughs> exactly. I always <laughs> like, you have to try hard because it's important. So that's my American programming, by the way. So don't take it personal. All right. We're working <laughs> on it. But, um, yeah, so I think that's a great point. Like, uh, it's, there's nothing wrong about trying. And I, like, I like how you said it, like, you don't want to try too hard. Like you don't want to show up at your house with like roses and like, mm -hmm. you know, a boom box, but you know, like, don't be lazy. I think is kind of the, the gist of what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, coming back to like, should you know Spanish or not? I think there's two parts of this and this is kind of what, you know, this, the rest of this podcast is going to be broken up into. I don't think Spanish is necessary when you're just casually dating, like when you're just mm -hmm. like going out for a few dates. And that's what I found because I mean, for eight months, um, mm -hmm. I would go on dates and I could basically the whole date was on Google translate. What I found though, is when I wanted stuff to, you know, progress and be longer term, that's when it became difficult. That's where it was like, okay, like, I don't really know this person. Like I can't really get to know them until we speak the same language. I dated a girl here that did speak English pretty well. So we were able to develop that like longer and deeper connection, which I really appreciated. And then it didn't work out with her. And I was seeing other, the other girls I was seeing were, they strictly spoke Spanish. Mm. And I was like, this sucks. Like coming from someone where I could just talk freely versus like, now I had to get out the phone again and you know, we'd misunderstand each other. And it was just kind of, it was just kind of exhausting. And so I think for guys that want to come down here and stay for a long time and maybe you get a girlfriend, um, I think knowing Spanish and learning it fluently, I'm not like, you don't got to be like hundred percent fluent, but at least like mm -hmm. 75%, that's really going to help you connect on that deeper level and be able to make something happen long-term. Mm -hmm. So for you, you speak English. Have you ever dated a guy that speaks English? Actually, no, but wow. that's a really good point that you had that you told because it's true if you want a relationship that it's something to have fun i don't know one night or for a week or something like that it's not necessary to learn the language because you will not get into like deep in the relationship yeah. but if you have something that is going to last or something that is more formal i think that both sides need to learn the language for each yeah. other i don't know for example if i'm dating a guy from korea or something like that then I will try to learn Korean and I also would like for him to learn Spanish so nice. that we can communicate in Spanish like one day and maybe one day communicate in, in Korean. But mm. I haven't never dated, dated a guy from another country, no. Only okay. from So why did you decide to learn English then? I'm curious. Do you speak pretty good English? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, because I love languages. So in general, I like to learn new languages. I also was trying to learn Korean and French, but I got a little Korean's bit bored hard. because it was, it was hard, hard. So very hard. I stopped, but I want to continue in the future. But I only learned not having the idea of dating a guy from another country, only mm -hmm. because I love the language and that's why I, I learned Gotcha. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, trust me, you do speak good English because I speak so, so Spanish. So I can tell like, the fact that like we can have a conversation is um, impressivo. Um, pardon me, but I know Korean, like I took, <laughs> in Korea in, um, I took Korean in like freshman year of college and I'm Korean, but I was adopted. So I'm like, you know, I grew up with all white people and mm -hmm. it's very tough because you have to learn a whole new alphabet with new symbols and stuff. That's why I think, you know, Spanish is a little, yeah, it's, it's easier because you already know the, you know, the words and you know how you had to know how to pronounce and stuff like that. Um, so that's very helpful. So what I'm curious, like, so let's say a guy is thinking about coming to Mexico. Uh, what would your first step be for him to start learning Spanish and start to be able to practice? Mm, well, I think the first thing that you need to do to learn Spanish, it's, to memorize a lot of words. For example, mm -hmm. I don't know, you search for a vocabulary for restaurants and you start learning cafe or well, coffee, uh, share, table, uh, something mm -hmm. like that. Or you start learning the basics like, how are you? Where are you from? And after you learn like basic words that you can search in, I don't know, in the internet, you can start taking classes 
because that's when you will get to use those words in a conversation. And also, if you are visiting the country that you are learning the language, it will be better because you will hear all the time the, the language, like Spanish. Yes. Or you will get to use the words that you have learned before in a restaurant, in a, the uh, delivery, or places like that. So yes. the first thing is that you have to be really, like, you have to try hard learning the, the words. Because if you only read the words one day and then the other day you don't read it, you are going to forget those words. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you, remember that I told you? No, ah, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and then you can start taking classes and with conversations, at the same time, you can learn grammar because mm -hmm. you will see your mistakes. And if sometimes when you are speaking with a native, native person from Mexico, yeah. They won't tell you like, oh, you are having this mistake and you will, you will, you will never know the mistake. But if you are taking classes, you will know that, oh, I was mistaken in this. So I have to get better at this. So right. I will do it like that. Okay. Yeah. I think that's good. And that's how I'm starting to practice more, more is that like, I'll even take some. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll, I'll take photo, like a screenshot of like, um, some words I'm learning and I'll put it as the background of my phone and then I'll basically yeah. study those throughout the day. Uh, like I, like I tell, you know, Jimena on our classes, I think learning language is super boring. So it's difficult for me to want to, you know, really invest in it. So it's going to be a longer mm -hmm. process for me, but I know a lot of you guys out there, you're a little more, um, you enjoy it more. And so. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to start is the vocabulary. That's what I started with. I learned a few basic phrases. Um, I think a great place to start is like ordering food at a restaurant. I basically mm -hmm. can go to a restaurant and I can speak full Spanish the whole way. Um, because, you know, I've memorized those lines like, uh, yeah, mi gusturia, da, 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 which is, I would like blah, blah, blah. La cuenta, which is the bill. <laughs> that was a big mm -hmm. change. Uh, escupa, which is, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, that one's very helpful. And then basically, yeah, it is a process. So over time, you're going to learn a little more. And I think when you start going on dates, then, especially down here with Spanish, uh, Mexican women, uh, with Latinas, you're going to get to practice a little bit. And you can even structure your date a little bit. Like, hey, like, um, be my profe. Like, tell me, teach me some Spanish, right? And what you'll find is she might actually then tell you, can you teach me some English, right? Because she'll want to put in the effort and invest into understanding you as well. So it goes both ways. Um, I actually don't like teaching English either, so it <laughs> doesn't last too long. <laughs> yeah. okay. And now, and guys, so we'll, we'll dive into this in the end, but you guys can reach out to Jimena on italki, which is the platform where you can take Spanish lessons. It's like an hour, it's online, it's super cheap. It's like, you know, 13 bucks, I think for an hour, or you can buy a package. And I actually helped Jimena here raise her prices because she wasn't charging enough. So she, and she's going to raise them again because, you know, she <laughs> offers a lot of value. So. We're getting there, but so there'll be a link down in the description you can book and we'll talk a little bit more at the end. But um, coming back to dating here, uh, I am going to be asking you a little bit. What are, do you look for in a guy? Like, I think that's really important, especially as a Mexican woman. What mm -hmm. if a gringo came down? What kind of gringo would you want to date, essentially? Um, or maybe you're just like, you know, I like Mexican guys. So, like, uh, OK, OK. Well, actually, uh, I don't care if it's a Mexican, a a man or if it's from another country i think a lot of people think that here we prefer to date mexican men but for yeah. me it's not important the thing that is important that it's the person by itself okay. so if it's someone that i don't know like has good uh i don't know how how to say that word in english but valores do you know that words mm -hmm. like values i think it's something like values that. oh valores um, okay uh, valores. Uh, I think that for me it works and also the connection with the person because I know that the language is important to have that connection but if we have things that we have in common for me it's also something that I will prefer to look right. in a guy and also if it's gent like a gentleman okay. I know that something that maybe it's like a debate because people say no I don't want a gentleman or I don't care if it's a gentleman, like I can take care of myself. I know that I can, I can take care of myself, but I think I would like someone that opens the door for me, 
when I get into the car or pulls a chair for me if we are in a restaurant or I don't know if I'm carry something that is really heavy. I know that I can carry that thing, but I would like for him to carry the thing for me. So I'm looking for those things. And also someone that knows what he wants. Uh, because if it's someone that it's like down, dudando, I don't know how to say that word. Like like wishy-washy? Like uncertain? No, like, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. If okay. he doesn't know, like, mm, do I want to date her or not? Like, if uh, he has those thoughts, then for me, it's a no. I okay. would prefer someone that it's, like, wow. direct, directo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many good points there. Like, mm -hmm. I noticed that, like, in approaches, like, when I go up to a girl that I don't quite like, mm -hmm. like, she can feel that. Like, mm -hmm. she can feel that I'm not super interested. And it's, it's interesting because, like, we tell guys who do cold approach, like, you'll actually find the best success with the girls who you think are like nines and tens because you'll just be so attracted to them. Like it'll just like emanate out of you when you, but otherwise, like when you approach a girl, you're not quite into like, there's like a little bit of like hesitation and like you're having to force it. So I did that today. I approached a couple of girls that, you know, from afar, they, <laughs> it's like, Oh yeah, they look great. And I got close and I'm like, no. Eh. And like, but I still did it. Cause you know, I'm going to go, all the, you know, I'm going to practice what I preach here. Mm. And, you know, about halfway through, like, I was like, my eyes were like tired. I was like bored and like, they could sense it. And just the, the energy was just like slowly going like, like this. Right. So I think that's a very important point. But the other point you made that was really, really key is that you can take care of yourself, but you still want a guy that can do that stuff. And that is, I think my question for you, because this is a big problem in the U S to be honest, mm -hmm. in other Western countries like Australia, maybe mm -hmm. Canada is that the whole independent women, you know, mm -hmm. phenomenon, right? So mm -hmm. they'll be like, you said it very like kindly and like sweetly, like, you know, like, um, but they'll be like, yo, I want, you know, I can take care of myself, but you gotta give me all this. They'll, they're almost like entitled. Like you know? with money or something, or what do you mean with the last Like all the above, like they won't, like I'm, I'm guessing like for you, if a guy holds a door for you, you'll be like, you know, you'll it'll make you happy, you'll be thankful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in America, they'll just expect it and they'll be kind of rude about it you know what i mean uh, okay okay yeah i think that the thing with independence uh it's something that it's good because uh, i know that in mexico i know that you have heard but it's there is something that is called machismo i don't know if you have i was heard literally gonna machismo. ask you about it we were gonna talk about that yeah yeah uh, okay okay well it's related no so here the machismo it's something that it's still strong. Uh, it was stronger in the past with my parents and some in that generation. But in these days, we still have like those kind of thoughts. And I don't like those thoughts because they're like extreme. Like, oh, you cannot do anything. You have to do the things that I want and that's it. And mm -hmm. it's not about that because um, me as a woman, I know that I can work and I would like to do the things that I want and he can do the things that he wants. But for things like a gentleman, I think something that it's cute or for me, like, oh, okay. he's really like gentleman. It's not something okay. that I'm like, you have to do this because it will be the same for women. Like you have to cook, but you have to do this. So okay. none of us has to do something like if it's like a rule or something uh -huh. that it's put in the uh, society. But for me, it will be, oh, for me, it will be nice. And if you are someone that doesn't like that, well, it's okay. We can just, like, see if we have things in common. If we don't have things in common, then we can just part away, right? Yeah. We can separate. But for me, it will be something that I will appreciate. Like okay. Like someone that acts of service, something like mm -hmm. that, right? Yes. And that's such important quality in a relationship. Um, mm -hmm. having a service mindset, like you're always, not always, but you're looking to help the, your, the person you're with. And I think those are what makes mm -hmm. successful relationships versus when one person's very selfish, um, mm -hmm. or both are very selfish. Like those are usually the relationships I see that, you know, just come in and come out before you can even, you know, count to three. Those, I think those are great points, uh, Jimena. And it's funny you mentioned the machismo because a lot of the girls we talk to, they're like, yeah, I don't like dating Mexican guys because a lot of them are machismo. 
Mm. And so if, if you guys like another way to describe machismo, if you're like, what the hell? So what does that mean? Like, I still don't quite understand. It's basically like a guy trying to be super macho all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we call it in, you know, the, the community, we call it always alpha all the time. So it's a guy that tries to like pretend like he's basically pretending to be a man, but he's like overcompensating. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, walking around all the time like this, like kind of being a dick, like. <laughs> um, yes, yes. And we don't like hanging out with those people either. <laughs> just as guys, like, we don't make friends with those people either. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, man, go, go be tough. <laughs> go be tough <laughs> over there, like not mm -hmm. over here. Now, a question for you, what would you recommend for a guy to look for in a woman, a Mexican woman, traditional feminine woman? Mm, like the qualities or like the characteristics or? Let's go both. Yeah, ambos. Mm, a Mexican woman? Well, I think it depends on the person because from my perspective, I think that here in Mexico, there's like... A misconception that a lot of people say oh latinas are really like uh like hard to to take or like they're really aggressive or something like that mm, but like i don't think that's true <laughs> that we are aggressive <laughs> or that we are crazy <laughs> so well you guys are a little crazy yeah but uh <laughs> i think depends on the person but no i think that we like mexican women are really passionate like we have mm. a lot of love to give and to receive. So oh, yes. I think that's a good quality for, for Mexican women, that we are really passionate. doesn't mean that we are crazy. That's a misconception that a lot of people in other countries has. And no, we are, we are not crazy. Uh, maybe you will find a, a few women that are like jealous, but I think that's something that it can occur in both ways, like men and women. Yes. But I think... You can you can find women here that really passion that has like goals in in their lives i think that's also a really good thing because if you are dating someone that doesn't know what to do with her or his life mm -hmm. i think it's not attractive either for both like men and women so um, someone that has like a goal in her life on his life and I don't know. I think a lot of people, or I don't know if that's true for men in another and other countries, that they like Mexican or Latinas also because of their height. Like if they're short or tall. I don't know if you guys because prefer. They're very short. Muy bajo. <laughs> Muy <laughs> pequeña. Sí. Yes, here in Mexico, the like the average of the height is really short. So yes. if you guys like that, you will find that here in Mexico. <laughs> girls or women Definitely. so that's also another thing and also there's a misconception that all women in mexico has like curves or like an amazing mm. body every each body is different each body is beautiful so you will find a lot of bodies in mexico not like the specific <laughs> ones that you will hear in i don't know in the internet or something like that no that's not true we have like uh diverse diversidad here mm -hmm. in mexico. Yeah. a lot of bodies yeah i've never heard that before uh very true yeah you, you get you definitely don't get as many big girls as in the states like there's a lot of obesity in the u.s so you don't see a lot of that here yeah a lot of girls like don't work out a lot um you don't find like this maybe the supermodel look as much um mm -hmm. but yeah you just i mean it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it's like do you connect with the person and um there's a lot of cute girls here, so you get a lot of, you get a lot of that. Uh, yes, very short, muy, muy pequeña. Um, so you can always tease them, guys. If you're doing an approach, you can tease them by how short they are, and they'll, they'll laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. And yeah. also, I know that if you are attracted to someone, if that's also important because if you are dating someone only for the feelings, but at the, at the end of the day, you are, go, you are going to kiss that person. So it's also important to feel that attract, <laughs> attraction. I don't know yes. how to say it in English. <laughs> but I'm not saying that it's the only thing that matters. No, 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 no. Yeah. Because it's the person, the personality, like the connection. But at the end of the day, it's also something that you have to consider. Yeah, uh, for sure. You, you definitely, like looks are super important. Like they are. People overlook them. But... Because at the end of the day, you are going to be looking at them for a while. 
And I think it's more important for a guy uh, than mm -hmm. it is a woman because uh, we are attracted sexually. That is our kind of like our trigger. Like that's mm -hmm. what kind of like, that's why we do approaches and we see the girl and we're like, okay, her, even though we don't know a single thing about her. Mm -hmm. um, Long-term relationship though, you want both. And that's like ultimately what we're teaching you guys is how to find both. You, you don't just want one or the other. Um, I would prefer to have a girl that's has a great personality and over a girl that's just good looking because girls that are just good looking are like not worth it <laughs> not worth it guys i'm mean, sure you've experienced dating people that are just hot right you know mm -hmm. once the sexual spark wears off because it will you know it's a relationship mm -hmm. you you really want to be able to bond over like who you guys are as people and that's when you essentially fall in love which I think is what a lot of people are looking for. Um, guys, especially guys here, like that's why you come to Mexico, right? Because you weren't able to find that in the States. Um, and then you, yeah, you really just kind of accept the person as they are in terms of their looks too. You start to, you know, at first they're like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And then you realize, oh, okay, there's a blemish here and, you know, a spot here. Mm -hmm. uh, but then as you get to know them and if you really like them as a person, that starts to not really matter anymore. And um, thankfully for guys, women, um, from our experience, and you can confirm this or deny this, are really more attracted to who the person is. Um, and I think that's a very feminine quality. So when you meet a girl that's really into who a guy, how a guy looks, that actually means that she's really gone into her masculine. So you find that a lot in the States because women are so masculinized. They really kind of want that super hot guy, right? They want the guy that they can kind of parade around and put on Instagram, right? And you meet these women and they're very, like, very hyper masculine, like very, like, you know, a bit controlling a lot of the times. And they're very career driven, like to like an unhealthy degree, I think. Like, I, I agree, like you want a girl that has is able to take care of herself. But when a girl's like, oh, you know, I got, I'm, I'm a boss girl, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's pretty annoying, we find. Mm -hmm. So with a super masculine woman, like she'll she will be more attracted to looks. But for circle, you meet a, a girl that's very feminine and her feminine, um, she, you know, she's going to want to look at you. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, see, well, I think that's true in a certain way. Like we normally are more attracted to the personality. And that's also something common to hear on social social media because there's like jokes that, oh, it's really common to see a beautiful girl, a beautiful woman with... Uh, <laughs> Ugly guy, well, I'm not like judging looks, but there is something that's saying in social media because normally women are more attracted to the personality and it doesn't yeah. matter like the looks in the right. person. But it doesn't mean that we are only looking for someone that we don't feel attract because for that moment in the relationship, even if it's not that good looking, mm -hmm. you will think that it's good looking in your head because you were... <laughs> In, you are in love with the personality so yeah sure. even, you know Very what honest. i mean uh, so, uh -huh, you will think oh he's the most handsome guy even though people tell you like no he's really ugly or he's not that good looking i'm not saying that it's important looks we yeah. we, we should not base the relationship on the looks but yeah. i'm just saying that in that moment in the relationship you will you will think like oh he's so handsome but in re mm -hmm. reality it's not that handsome. Right. Oh, you see that a ton here in Mexico. You'll see like a nine or 10 woman and she's with like a skinny guy, like a super skinny guy or like uh, a guy with like, you know, looks like he just rolled out of bed, um, not fit. And here's you just like, huh. Um, <laughs> at least for me, I'm always like, okay, well that guy must have like some sort of really like strong characteristic that makes her very attracted mm -hmm. to him and i think mm -hmm. one of those characteristics might be is that he doesn't put her on a pedestal he isn't like oh she's the most beautiful thing right he just kind of sees her as a person right? yeah. and i think that's a very attractive quality and something that i've had to work on a lot is working on that like it isn't all about looks and that mm -hmm. there is like there are other components um again, again guys that's what we teach us we teach how to you know understand how women speak and think and, and act and that's really going to help you connect with them on a deeper level because um, mm -hmm. if you try to connect with a woman the way you connect to your guy friends it's not mm -hmm. going to work out as guys we're very direct we get to the point um, obviously in this context with you and i we're being very direct and to the point because it's a podcast but mm -hmm. in general like 
we always say that women want to discover a man like a novel. They want to take 20 years to figure him out and read him and like find all the details. And the big mistake a lot of guys make is on the first date, they're like, oh, this is everything that's happened in my life. Is <laughs> you know, they basically give them the summary of the book before it's over. Mm. So really learning how to add a little mystery into your your day to day uh, re- interactions with women, I think is going to really help. And now the last question I had for you today is, what do you think is important for a woman to give for to a man, right? Because I think I agree with you, it's really important for a guy to, you know, I, I think to, to pay to, to, you know, lead to open the doors to do all that stuff, um, to make sure he's taking care of her. Um, that's what mm-hmm. I really focus on. Like when she's with me, how can I take care of her the best I can? Mm-hmm. Now, what should a guy look though for like a woman being of service to him? Like what is mm-hmm. a green flag in that sense? Well, I think it's someone that supports you, support you on um, the things that you want to like reach. I don't know on yeah. all the things that you want to like your goals. If you are with someone that doesn't give how do we say that? Like, doesn't like she doesn't care about your goals. That's mm-hmm. also like a red flag because and when you are in the relationship, you are interested in the things that the person are interested in. Yes. It's, I'm not saying that the woman should give her life, like should give up her life for the things that the man likes, but you can support that those things uh, being by him side or like, I don't know, if you have the opportunity in that moment to cook for him, I'm not saying that it's something that you should do, but if you have the opportunity and he also has opportunity to cook for you, you can do like for each other. I don't know, you can cook for him if he, if, if he needs that because he's really busy or also the other side. And also like someone that doesn't want to change you completely because mm-hmm. I think that's something really common uh, when people has high expectations or people think like, oh, I want a prince or the other side, I want a princess. Yeah. So you should put your expectations aside because you are dating the person by itself. Not you are not dating the ideal person that you have in your in your head. Mm-hmm. So if you're in love with that person, it's because you decide that. So you can the person can change if he's acting in a weird way or aggressive or something like that. Well, that's a different like subject. But I don't know if he's not that like the prince that you saw in the K dramas or like in the TV shows. Well. I think a green flag is that you don't want to change him into a completely person or to mm. completely men. So also sure. that. Yeah. Wow, that's a, those are some great points there. Uh, 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, the change you want, and that goes for guys too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, just in general, like, you know, I think there's ways you can encourage your partner to be better. Um, mm-hmm. right? And you want to support them and you know if there's something you think that can make their life better i think it's important to communicate that um mm-hmm. obviously in like a kind loving way not like you know what would really make you hotter is if <laughs> like probably not the best way to go about it uh, it's really i think that's a big trap a lot of people fall into they they date a person they're like i'm gonna change them i'm gonna make them whole i'm gonna make them complete i'm gonna help them get healthy get off their addictions all that stuff as as you know how I, I do addiction coaching as well and so mm-hmm. that's one of the biggest problems in addiction relationships is that like oh i'm gonna save him i'm gonna help him you know get sober and like change his life around like that is like the worst way to like actually help encourage someone to change is to try to change him so i think that's a great point mm-hmm. and no one wants somebody that's gonna like be like you know i don't like the way you did like you should have like this because i want you to do that uh as very unattractive and then the other point you made which was um that she supports you right? mm-hmm. that's really all that guys are looking for they're just wanting somebody that they can come home to that's going to be peaceful and happy and you know because we're really for guys anyway we're very busy at our work we're we mm-hmm. are really looking to the future and really how to build like businesses and all that stuff um make a lot of money and that takes a lot of mental energy that takes a lot of work so when we come home we just want to be like yo i can turn that part of my brain off and just relax and have fun and laugh and kind of recharge that. And then, you know, tomorrow I'm going to get back out there and go. Um, 
not for everyone. Some, some guys really do want like a girl that's also like an entrepreneur where they can come mm -hmm. home and like, talk about business and stuff. I think that's really cool too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that a little bit too. Like I want to be able to share about like the work I did. Um, mm -hmm. and at the same time, then I want to stop thinking about that and be like, okay, like let's, how was your day? Like, what would you, what did you do? Right. Kind of get out of myself because I've been focusing about myself and like what I'm doing for my work. Um, it's really important for me to then be able to like give to the other person, like give my time. And that's what recharges me is, um, being of service to, to another person. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you permission to like, yeah, talk about yourself again. Right. It's like, a, it's like a give and take a back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And to add something, the, the, the last thing that you, that you said, uh, I think that dynamic, dynamic, dynamica, dynamic, in the relationship. <laughs> okay. I think that depends on the relationship because I know that as a society, we have like strict rules that all oh, the women should do, should do this and the men should do this. But I think it depends because it's not wrong if a woman only wants to cook or only wants to dedicate her life in at home. Like that's not wrong because women prefer that and it depends on her and depends on the relationship that they have with the men. But like you said, there are other relationships that both works, work, both has their own business and they're happy with that. So it's not necessary to establish like a specific dynamic for the relationship. It depends on how it works for both. So it doesn't have yeah. to be something specific with structure. Definitely. Definitely. Like, if, if, I don't know if you know the guy, Alex Hermosi, he's like a big business guy him and his wife are in business together. Like they run like a billion dollar company. So like, that's how they connected. And originally it was over like business mm -hmm. and stuff. I also think, yeah, it, like what the point you said, like you want a girl that's interested in your life and like your mm -hmm. career passions, um, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Like you want to be supportive of what she's doing in her life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we find that as guys really attractive. Like when a girl is like asking about it, she's curious, right? It is a bit unattractive when when you're dating just a selfish person in general, this can go both ways too. Like you want a person that's, mm -hmm. um, that's curious. And then, yeah, the supporting, I think that, you know, the part about like, Hey, like I worked all day, you know, I'm providing for us, like would appreciate if like you, I came home and like you had, you could cook, cook this dinner. I think that's totally fair. I think it gets mm -hmm. construed a, a lot. Like she should be in the kitchen and he, you know, mm -hmm. like that's when people are like, ah, fuck that. Like, no. Um, but really when you look, when you, when you word it in that context where it's like, Hey, like, um, as long as both parties are contributing to help the greater mission of the relationship, I think that's, that's what makes it really healthy. And then, you know, it's not like we do, it's not like we want a, a, a girlfriend to cook for us because we think it like, you know, we, we, it's how women should be. No, it's just like, Hey, I've been grinding all day. I don't want to come home and then have to cook this food too. Like if you could just do that, like that would really be helpful. And then we can hang out and have mm -hmm. fun and like watch TV or something or whatever. So yeah, there's, there's a lot we can talk about this. And I think, I think this will be a good place to stop. But um, any last thoughts on that before we, we start to wrap? Mm, no, I think like the last thing is that that depends on the dynamics. And also, if you are, if you want to come to Mexico, like for dating, it will be better if you learn Spanish in general, so that mm -hmm. you can like, put that effort in the relationship. And also for the other part for her or well like her to learn English or I don't know which language. Well you only have clients with from the United States, right? Or, or like London or like other places in the world. Oh, okay, people, okay. That English, people that speak English. The so. English <laughs> so yeah. or also the other part to learn English. So yes. both languages. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely couldn't agree more there. And we are actually guys starting a kind of a Mexican part of our company where we're gonna be one of our, my good friends who will be, well, I helped him with his cold approach and getting better at that. We're going to have an interview with him soon. He's going to be starting to run, um, Mexican, Mexico dating. So he'll be working with Mexican guys specifically just because we find that Mexican guys with dating, they're a little more like, it's like salsa. They're like a little more suave. They like things to be a little more free flowing and are like, you know, most, most gringos slash guys from, you know, other parts of, you know, Western worlds we're a little more uh, systemized and structured. Like we want to kind of be able to know what to say, when to say it and how to say it. Um, obviously we have to be a little free flowing too, but we like to have like kind of like a system in place. And I found that when I've tried to work with Mexican guys, 
they're like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I need to be like, you know, each girl's got to be different. I have to have like, it's like a dance, right? Like bachata or like a rumba or something. Like, it has to be very loose. So anyway, that is, you know, another part of, of what we're going to be starting here. So if you're a Mexican guy watching this, uh, know that there's support for you. But otherwise, yeah. Hey, Jimena, thank you for coming on. This was, uh, this was great. And it was great to not have to talk to you in Spanish for an hour <laughs> this time. Uh, now I feel you guys because I had to yeah. speak English and it's something that puts me in a in a difficult position because my English is not perfect, but I, I understand you guys. I understand my students. And <laughs> now I will be <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now I will be more easy on you. So yeah, wow, but thank, thank you. you for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and where can people find you if they want to work with you? Because I would guys suggest if you're trying to get Spanish lessons, Jimena is a great um, place to start. You can find me on italki. Um, I think my name is like Jimena Diaz. So you can find me like Jimena Diaz in Italki if you search. And you will see my picture in the yep. profile. So you will find me quickly. I'll put the link in because no one's going to be able to spell Jimena Diaz. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Zero chance. Okay, okay, okay. See. Yeah. So for 13 bucks, guys, hey, you can book an hour. And I've been working a few, like four months now. It's been very helpful. It's really helped me uh, make a lot of progress. And it's helped my dating life too, because I'm able to um, go a portion of the date now, being able to speak Spanish and be able to, you know, go back and forth a little bit. So got a long ways to go. However, we're, we're making a lot of progress. And then last thing for you guys in terms of working with us, you know, we do have our, first off, we have our digital seduction course, which you guys can pick up. Just DM us on Instagram at Mexpat Dating. Uh, it's got like 12 hours of content that is really going to help you start to put together your online dating profile and your Instagram, which are two very important things. Um, we do suggest you learn online dating as well as cold approach. And then Instagram is going to be important for both. Like until I had a good Instagram, I wasn't really getting dates because they would see my, my Instagram. I'd have like 30 followers and then like a couple pictures of me, like in the mirror and then <laughs> they're like, yeah, not, not this guy. So as soon as I started getting some professional photos done, um, really work on, on my, I guess my social media image, I really started to get better at dating. And, you know, I really don't care about Instagram, like in terms of like, like it's Instagram. Like we all understand the premise of it. It's, it's just like a snapshot of your life, but it, it was really important to, to have that down and be active on it, be posting stories. So the girls you're dating can see that you have an interesting life and that you, you know, it's something that they might want to join into. And then as well with cold approach. So that's where my expertise comes in. Jaren's going to help you with the online stuff, but I'm going to help you with going out there and meeting women in person, which is what I enjoy doing most. And I've had the most success at, uh, I have tried online dating and I, I've made a few videos recently, but you know, I got on Bumble and Tinder and gave it a shot and yeah, it, it was all right. It's, I still like prefer like that inhuman connection where you basically can, can connect with that person like energetically, spiritually, physically, all that, like just immediately. And it's, it's a really fun skill once you get down. So I'm here to help you guys with that. So you can schedule a consult with us down below. Uh, it'll be about 20, 30 to 40 minutes. And we'll really kind of find out where you are in your dating life, what you're looking for, whether you want to come down to Mexico, relocate. Um, we can help you with that as well. Or if you're already here and you want to start um, just getting out there and, and facing that fear of rejection and, and overcoming that, um, we're here for that for you as well. I think a lot of guys will see that pretty girl like Jimena and this is the big struggle guys face is that they they see the guy, the girl and they're too afraid to do it. And then the rest of the, at the day, they're just like, God damn it. Like, what if I would have just said hi? Like, you know, that regret. So once you learn the skill, you never have to face that regret again. And you can very quickly see if she likes you or not. So anyway, guys, yeah, appreciate you guys tuning into the channel. Um, let us know if you want Jimena to come back on and give us some more um, w truth bombs. That was I really appreciate it. You, you, you gave some really great points. And with that, guys, we'll uh, see you in the next one. Uh, ciao. Bye.